Hey everybody, welcome to Etc. Live. What's up, people? I'm your host, Kelly Barrett. I am super excited tonight for, for a couple of reasons. Um, as you can see, I have an entire gaggle of rock stars on the show. This is actually the most guests I've ever had on one show, so I'm super excited about that. Um, I We have, all, all, on, all on one little green room stage, uh, Mark Gladstone, Sherelle Jardine, Scott Jackson, Gordon Maxwell, Greg Stewart, uh, Bruce Coughlin, who couldn't be with us tonight, and they are Peace Nick Collective. Welcome, guys. Thank Hello. you. Thank Hello. you. Hi, Bruce, if you're watching, and if he's not, send our regards to him. We we hope he gets well soon. It's too bad he couldn't yeah. be here, but we'll, we'll just talk about him then. So tell yeah. us some, tell yeah. some yeah. Bruce. No, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so first of all, before we, we go any further, and I kind of want to give everybody some time to just have a little intro and, and tell us kind of a little bit about what your, your career and how it's got you to here, but first... Without further ado, uh, Mark, I just want to congratulate you and Prism on your induction into the Canadian Rock of Fame in September. Thank you very much. Um, and, and so again, like I said, I want to go around with, with all of you and, and give you a little intro here, but why don't we start with you, Mark? And and on that note, my first question will, will be to you. Like, tell, Can you tell us what that experience was like? Uh, <laughs> yeah, a, a little bit nerve wracking uh, for a few reasons that I actually won't go into right now. Um, there was, let's say there was more people in the prism party than there were seats available in the theater. <laughs> oh, so no, like there. the actual band or their guests? Uh, both, yeah. Right. So the original prism was there as well as the prism nowadays. And right girlfriends and wives and nice. that needs a fair number of chairs and they weren't there. <laughs> oh, what did and you guys do? <laughs> we just took over. <laughs> we got into a big fist fight with the people beside us and, <laughs> and they didn't want to move and we had to get the management involved and was wow. there, was there other bands being inducted at the same time? Was. Yeah. 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 As a matter of as this a matter of fact, this right? is what it's all about. Right. It sounds like <laughs> hockey to me. There was, a, there was another. I'm not going to completely deflect here, but there was another band being inducted that day too, called Chilliwack. Right. Right. Oh, oh. There you go. I was inducted with uh, two other bands. Anyway, can you yeah. tell me <laughs> I did not see you there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, but it was that was pretty amazing seeing all those people, especially in the room. There's a, there's a room where everybody's just having a few drinks and getting their pictures taken with the uh, the Walk of Fame plaque and stuff before we went into the theater. Um, that was pretty neat seeing all those people there, like Michelle Pagliaro. I probably never get a chance to meet him any other time. So, right. And so, so is, that, is that the first time you've ever been to that, that award ceremony? Yes. Wow. And Sherelle, you obviously were there as well. And and I was going to get to the Chilliwack side of things, but we'll go oh, there. I, and we, and that's, yeah. that's okay. <laughs> you're talking about the, uh, the, the Walk of Fame, the induction ceremony yes. in Calgary. Was it not? That's for the Hall of <laughs> no. Oh, no. We're not for the Walk of Fame. You're talking about Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A lot of fame and completely fame. different. I had so no idea. You went to the induction ceremony and a hockey game broke out, is basically what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro. Okay, so go ahead, Mark, and just I mean, everybody knows who you are. Um, and I and you've been on the show a few times as as a new show. So just go ahead, Mark, and, and tell us just some of the bands that you've been in and, and just kind of a little history on your career that's taken you to this point. Uh, okay, um, not everybody knows who I am, actually, but because <laughs> of you. Everybody watching this show knows who you are. <laughs> um, so uh, I've been teaching piano for a long time. Um, one of the first uh, bands, I guess, that anybody would ever have heard of was Doug and the Slugs that I was in. Uh, I went from Doug and the Slugs to Nick Gilder and Sweeney Todd. I did a short stint with a band called Toronto, which is where I met Al Harlow. And then Al Harlow wasn't super happy with what was going on in Prism at the time. And uh, so that was my job was to make him happy after he had me in Prism. And uh, 
And I've been no in prison. Pressure. No pressure. <laughs> oh, I've been in prison for the last 11, 12 years. Excellent. And and when you say that you were, do you want to elaborate on your job was to make Al happy or no? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was kind of just joking, actually. But I'm just going for the juice to make it. Mark, you're giving it out. So. <laughs> That, uh, that I replaced, and he shall remain nameless. Um, he wasn't making Al happy. Let's just put it that way. Okay, good enough. Yeah. And I left out a bunch of other bands. <laughs> um, a, uh, Stone Poets is with uh, these guys right here um, for the last, what, 12 years? Yeah. 11 years? Yeah. Something like that. 2011, right? Yeah. Um, what else? We were a band in Paris with Scott. Uh, head with Sherelle, uh, just about any original project I can sink my teeth into and not make any money at, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the love of the craft, Mark, though, right? <laughs> right. That's what I keep telling myself. Speaking of stone poets, um, I'll turn it over to you and, and go ahead. Give us a little background. <laughs> So, I mean, years ago, started with my solo original Sherelle Jardine band, and that's actually Mark played with me for um, probably at about 2005. He got involved with that, and so that was really cool. And then from there, the Jardines, I had a band with my daughter and uh, AJ. I don't know if I mentioned that before, probably. And so she's in Nashville now, so she broke the band up. I have to say thanks, AJ. <laughs> 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 Give my daughter a little. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was <laughs> <hard to see. laughs> we actually went to Nashville and she just totally got the bug. And so she was like, I'm moving down here. So it was awesome for her. And she's been there uh, for six years now. So that's cool. So I, put out two, I, I did four solo albums on my own. And then I put out two of the Jardines. And then we had Head. That was with Mark and a bunch of other cool dudes. And we put out two albums. And then Stone Poets, we just released our fifth album. And so. Yeah, that's kind of where my last um, twenty years have gone, and it's it's quite a quite a journey. <laughs> I've also been on the other side of the industry too. So I was in I was like president of the Pacific Songwriters Association, and and kind of did that whole you know other side of kind of helping other artists you know get their legs, and so that was that was great. So that gives me both the right and left side of my brain to kind of you know make my way through this business of music and. Yeah, and you, and, you, and you also had a, a show of your own, and you did the talk show host thing yourself. I, I think did. Was, I yeah, it. Make, make a scene. Canada, make a scene, Canada. Um, that was three years that I did that. So I had people like Jeff Martin. Um, I can't even think of everybody that I had. You on had right Leona now. Boyd. I think you had Leona Boyd on. Leona Boyd. Um, God, this, oh, I should have brought a list. There was so many really great, amazing, Andy Kim. I caught Andy Kim. Andy Kim. Yeah, That's which great. actually went into him at the uh, induction ceremony. I'm like, Andy, and he's like, Sherelle. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but lo just a really great opportunity to to learn more about what other Canadian artists are doing and and like what you're doing now, right? It's it's right. awesome. Yeah. It is. It, and it's so, so neat when you get to meet these people, you know, when you, when you do a show with someone and you get to meet them in person, you know, as I've met yourself and Mark a few times now on the circuit. And I, and I have to really quickly say, I have kind of a soft spot for you and Mike and my viewers know this story, but I'll just say it quickly is um, Mark and Cheryl were actually the first people, literally the first people ever that I ever interviewed before I started. Yeah. I was, I was a guest host on another show and they let me choose my guests and I chose you two. And I was so nervous, of course, cause it was unknown territory to me and you guys were just so laid back and friendly and, Within about two minutes, I just felt like I was talking to a few old friends. And then an hour after that show, I got offered my own show. And I always bring that back to you, too, because I don't know that if you guys hadn't been such easy to talk to guests, I don't know if I would have even considered that it was something I could or would want to do. So, yeah. So I was, you, can't blame, you can't blame it all on us, though. You're pretty good at what you do. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Greg, over to you. Over to you, Greg. Okay, this is this is how I think it happened. Now, um, <laughs> these guys were all uh, putting a, a little project together to do the, like the peace concert at Hubcast, right? right? Yes. So there's a place out here called Hubcast, and it was streamed all over the world. Um, three days before that happened, Bruce called me and said, "What are you doing Thursday night?" And I said, "Nothing." <laughs> and he said, "No, you're playing with this band on Thursday night. Here's all the 
like have it ready because we're not going to rehearse basically until right before the gig. So that's how I came here. But I started off in Calgary uh, in the seventies. I think I'm I'm the oldest one in the band by far. So I don't care who knows. Oh, okay. <laughs> so uh, I did my first time in Calgary and in Alberta, and then I moved out here in the uh, late eighties and. I've been just doing all kinds of things ever since. I played with Bo Diddley out here, and uh, when I was in yeah. Calgary, <laughs> I went out on a couple of tours with Frank Mills. No rock and roll with Frank Mills. Uh, no, you guys no, know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. for all those. We're all we're all hearing that earworm yeah, right now. Yeah, if yes. you don't yeah. know what. Walk down. Walk down. Walk down. Walk down. Walk down. Oh yeah, yeah. Didn't Paul Mazzioli manage him too? Oh, who? Yeah. Paul Mazzioli? No, I know the name. No. Anyway, and. So I've been a journeyman uh, player of originals, and uh, I've been an engineer, and I do front of house sound. And we're I'm very happy to be with these people. The rehearsals are fun. I would and, imagine. And I, quite frankly, a lot of bands don't really rehearse that much. And everybody, I'm I'm by far the worst singer in this band, and which is fine. And he's pretty damn good. And I'm okay. <laughs> You heard the harmonies. I don't think there's a bad singer in this band. I disagree with you on that. But yes, you were. <laughs> yeah, no, in rehearsals, we tend to say, okay, somebody, we can't all sing. So maybe you two don't sing this song. Everybody's <laughs> fine with that. So that's great. Glad to be here. And I'm happy to have you here. And, and uh, we'll, we'll go over to Gord. What? <laughs> Wake up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm going to hold the list. <laughs> uh, well, when I was a wee boy, no. <laughs> a wee lad. A wee lad. We had no shoes, but we were happy. <laughs> yeah. No, I pretty much, my, my parents put me into music very early, so uh, I went to Edmonton after I graduated, got a university degree in music, and and then I started playing. I started playing with a few different bands in Edmonton and cut my teeth kind of there because in Edmonton there's all sorts of different kinds of music. There's, yeah, I think even to this day, you know, there was there was jazz, there was salsa. I played in the salsa band. I played in this band. I, mean, I played every night of the week, like absolutely every night of the week. I have to. My wife teases me because when I met her, when I got her number, I never phoned her for a month. Because, because and she had given up on me because I were you playing coy? Were you just trying to be coy or what? Literally didn't have a night off and for oh, okay. a month. I played, you know, constantly in Edmonton and it was a great time. <clears throat> that was back in the eighties. But uh when I moved to Vancouver um in eighty seven, it was to join the rebirth of a band called One Horse Blue, which which was doing well and, and it had a couple of hits or three hits or so in the late 70s and when I, I was in high school in the late 70s so my friends had their album and stuff and so I'd, I'd heard of One Horse Blue but while I was in Edmonton I, I started playing with Rocco who was a member of One Horse Blue he was uh, he is uh, or was the drummer so anyway I started playing in bands with Rocco Tim Fian band and this and that kind of band and then Rocco moved out to Vancouver and said hey you want to join the band <clears throat> that him and Michael were putting back together. So we put One Horse Blue back together and did an album that did very well in the 90s. Had, I don't know, five or six top 20 hits. Um, and, uh, I, uh, you know, but it was great. It was a great time <clears throat> until we realized there were so many artists and so many songwriters in the band that it, it just became kind of a mess. <laughs> <laughs> You know, just too many cooks. <laughs> kind of like this band. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say. So it only took 10 years to, uh, for Rocco and Michael, who were the original two members of the band from the 70s, to find out they didn't like each other all over again. So, oh, you know. <laughs> so that was that, right? Onwards and upwards. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's why we broke up the first time. Circle of life. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, yeah, that was that was a good time, and then uh, and then I realized that you know it was a lot of, as much as money I was making money as a songwriter in the band, 
but you know to flog your own music is a, a, a slog it's a it's a tough goal that's all yeah, we all know yes, that, right? absolutely. so then it was uh, on to getting a job with Ian Tyson as a side man and um, that was 20 years <laughs> <laughs> Which I went, yeah, wow. <laughs> Which kind of flew by because you know my kids were growing up and stuff, and it was uh, it was a good gig because we only did like ninety dates a year, you know. So um, it, yeah. So um, you also uh, toured with Valdi. Did you tour with Valdi as well? Did you? I did a yeah, a couple of small tours with Valdi. Uh, yeah, and yeah, him and Gary too. Gary Gary Kogar, that they did do some stuff together still. But yeah, no, Valdi, he's a great guy. Always remembers your name, no matter how long it's been since he's seen you. He always remembers your name. I don't know how he does that. Oh, you know, integrity. Class and integrity. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible with you, but this really is all. Classic yeah. integrity, for sure. So yes. yeah, then after uh, after Ian, um, well, of course, Ian passed away, but I, I, I was playing with him up until he pretty much stopped playing. And then um, at that time, uh, I joined uh, Chilliwack as, as the bass player for Chilliwack. Um, and it was uh, because Doug uh, Edwards uh, passed away of cancer. <clears throat> so, and I had been playing with the drummer, Jerry, in some other bands, including the Gourds, which was a band put together from Ian Tyson uh, people. Because in the 20 years that I was with Ian, there was two other people playing guitar, one for 10 years, Gordy Matthews from Edmonton, and another one, Gord, Gordon Lee Warden from uh, Nanaimo. And right. so, uh, so when Gordon Lee Warden joined the band, he insisted that we make this band called The Gords, and we made an album and did a bit of touring and stuff like that. So that was another uh, band where I you know, got to play original music, which is why I'm in this band, because I get to play original music. <laughs> and, right. You know, I'll do anything to, you know, play my own songs. Uh, so anyway, after after Ian was the chords and then Chilliwack, and then we were, uh, that's what confused me is because we were inducted in 2019 at, in the Hall of Fame in Calgary. Um, and Andy Kim and the Cowboy Junkies were, were the other two bands that, Nice. were inducted with us so and that was it was amazing but i i like i tell my daughter it was kind of like getting uh it was kind of like getting traded to the right team at the right time where they win the stanley cup you know? yeah. <laughs> it's like, like, like Benino or somebody like, you know? <laughs> nick Benino has been with three teams and got all these things yeah. um, great analogy by the way <laughs> I, you know, I mean, obviously, I could be happy because there was 26 members in, in Chilliwack and, and everybody got an award. Like Bill Henderson, bless his soul, he's a saint, you know, made sure of that, right? Wow. So that's it. I love that. You know, and, I, and you you really see that in our Canadian music industry is just that in that integrity, that integrity, pardon me. And I think we've talked about this. I don't know, Mark and Trill, if we've ever discussed this, but just that that camaraderie that exists in the music community now that maybe necessarily wasn't there back in the years where things were super competitive. You know, there yeah. just seems to be Scott, would you would you agree with that? Um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because you you were all you know working and touring around back in the 80s and 90s and I and I was on the road in the 80s too. And I just noticed, I mean of course I'm not playing anymore, but I noticed when I come to the shows like Cornstalk last summer, uh, of course where Prism performed and Chilliwack as well. And to just see the way the musicians interact with each other, and they're all rooting for each other, and you know, I, and I just, I love that. <laughs> What's that? He said maybe we'll see you there in July, because we're playing yes. at the Corn Fest in Tabor. Oh yeah, should be there. Yes, you are. I will be there. <laughs> what a, what a, you gotta give a hats out, uh, shout out to Ken Ken Holst. Like he's just worked his butt off to to bring this, you know, this amazing festival to this tiny little town. So that'll be exciting. I look forward to seeing you there. And and uh, Scott hiding in the background there. <laughs> you're a little slouch to the touring because you've toured internationally. You know, you've toured the US. Yeah, and I did a my own uh, radio promotion tour across Canada with, as a solo artist. 
my experience was way different than these guys because I didn't grow up uh, playing in bands and that. I grew up playing hockey. And <laughs> I, went, I went and played college hockey and a funny story. This is like the Canadian music story right here. Yeah. I, I used to sing all the time, like I just walking down the hall or, you know, walking through the dressing room and I was, you know, after practice in the shower singing and this guy on our team, he started playing guitar and he says, Geez, you got a great voice. <laughs> and so anyway, we were talking about, we didn't get together that year to jam, but the next year we started getting together and I just, he would, he knew some cover songs and I would sing. And then I just kind of got the bug and went and bought a guitar. He helped me go buy a guitar and I started writing my own songs, but I didn't come at it until like 23, 24, really. That's when I started. And, and there, how I got into the music scene in Vancouver is I was I went and played drop in hockey at Burnaby Lake, and I hadn't played for a couple of years, but I thought, oh, I'm going to go. And this guy by the name of Jerry Wong, who's like connected with everybody in the music industry in Vancouver, was there, and uh, he uh, came up to me after, and we were talking on the bench, and I was talking. He said, "Oh, I'm a musician." I said, "Oh, I I just started writing some songs and stuff." But, and he looked at me, he says, you want to join the Musicians Hockey League? <laughs> <laughs> There's one of those. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know, because I could still play pretty well, right? So he was, like, recruiting guys. And so I ended up playing with those guys, and I got connected with a bunch of folks. And, uh, and Jerry took me under his wing, and we recorded my first record, which wasn't very good. But he, uh, he helped me figure out what the studio was like, and then, uh, then he... He produced my first two really, you know, kind of more professional records, and we got some radio play out of that. And uh, then, as I was doing my solo gigs or whatever, I connected with Mark a few times. We uh, did a couple of duets or you know duos or whatever in certain places. And then he was playing with a band called um, Brandon Paris Band, and then they kind of split up and turned into Abandoned Paris, and then uh, they had an opening for a singer, and so I said, hey, what about me? And so they auditioned me, and then I started playing with them. And then from there, we I connected with uh, Shirelle. Um, we were playing a gig together, and I, uh, I was writing this duet, and backstage I asked her, I said, hey, I got this song for and I, in my head, it's a duet. And I said, would you like to help me work on it? It was like half done, three quarters done. I didn't have the second verse done yet. And she said, sure. And then Mark was in the back and he says, hey, well, you guys can meet at our, at my place because she lives in Richmond. I live in Maple Ridge. I live in Maple Ridge. He lives in Poco, which is kind of in between. And so we started, so we met the one night. It was a Monday night. And I think every monday night after that for a few months we just started dropping our different ideas for songs and that's stone poets came to book so what i'm hearing is that you you kind of had horseshoes <laughs> or hockey sticks depending on how you look at it <laughs> you know what but you know the, most of the other members of the band you know they were out there for years and years and, and you just kind of sort of fell into it but the reason i wanted to get all of you to sort of give us that what you just gave us that little bit of background uh, it's, it's certainly not that people don't know of it already, but to, to put together an idea of the diversity and the amount of experience and that, that collectively come into this band, which, I mean, what a lineup. Like when, when I first, you know, Sherelle and I first spoke about doing this show and she sent me the biography of everybody, I was like, well, talk about a power band. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> to defend himself yeah. <laughs> for well over 30 years and uh and you know we on and off we oh we get together again here and there lately but uh, uh and then he he had this band called called um what, what was the beatles thing we had abbey oh, road yeah. abbey road rockers and did mostly school shows so he hired myself and mark and a drummer to to do this beatles uh, show and so that's when I met Mark about a year ago, and and it just seemed like uh, Bruce was the guy who went, Stone Poets, Gord, Craig, 
Got a band. Totally. Well, actually, totally. actually, Greg was in that Abbey Road Rockers first. That's right. right. Yeah. And then he heard that we were going to hire Gord, so he left. <laughs> yeah. Come on here. I don't know if that was familiar. <laughs> Scott and I met at the jam, right? The yeah. Minor. Yeah. I ran a jam in a little pub in Maple Ridge for off and on for 20 years and met tons of people down there. Um, I met you. When you came and subbed in for somebody, and we were playing in that place in Mission. That's it right. Was above the bowling alley. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. And that was quite a while ago. That was a so great everybody's gig. known each other for a long time. Yeah. Well, you just answered one of my questions, which was going to be, how did you guys all come together? And I think that's been answered. And, and to speak to what you guys just said, or what I just said, Ricky Lam. Hi, Ricky. Ricky's a really good friend of the oh, show here. Right. Isn't it Ricky? Uh, yeah. So he's saying, what a great pleasure it is to say hello to all of you. Such great talent all together on the oh, on the best talk show around. Oh, Yay! Wow. That's awesome. Um, I should say Bruce Coglin, he is an amazing writer, performer as well. Tillers Foley is, I mean, he's got so many bands that he's kind of involved in, and I should have his bio here so we could read it out, but um, we just, we're really thankful that he actually you know, put us together that that peace show that we did. It was cool because after it was over, I went, we could probably take this on the road. And then two days later, he's like, he goes, let's do this. You know, I was like, oh, well, yeah, hang on a minute. I was just kind of like, I got a going. gig in Ladue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> LA. Totally. Yeah. But Bruce so, was, was kind of like the, the mastermind behind the whole. Yeah. Peace awesome. Show. Awesome. Awesome. Genius. Yeah. 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 We did that thing, uh, the Thursday night thing. Yeah. That you, you know, yeah. Bruce put that together in no time. Yeah. And then afterwards, we I remember talking afterwards, and yeah, the, it kind of came up. Yeah, we should do this more. This whole and this whole theme around peace. Yeah. yeah because the world love. really needs it. You, think? you know, you no. Know, I have to say this because I, I was actually going to mention this, Scott. I have to say the Peace Net, Peace Net Collective, and like the specific genre of this music, I think could not have come at a better time. I. I really, I really believe that because I think, you know, not to go down the whole depressing COVID lane, but I do think the world to some, the entire world to some degree had PTSD after that. And now, now things have kind of evened out a little bit. I think now we're, we're facing almost the financial repercussions of it, you know, with, with the cost of fuel and groceries and housing and all that. And I really have been noticing, I even on social media, I think it's left people really stressed and with some anxiety and, and people seem quicker to, you know, be snappy on social media and, you know, and sure you post the odd thing about, you know, promoting the peace and, and let's, you know, let's just, you know, be nice to each other and all that. And I'm, so I think the timing for the band, which has a message of peace and tolerance and love and coming together through music, I, I don't think it could have come at a better time. And I'm wondering, um, and Greg, maybe I'll ask you this, was the timing intentional or, or was it just kind of a happy coincidence that, that this came about? <sighs> Well, I'm not a religious person, but I do believe that everything happens for a reason. And it usually happens when it's supposed to happen. At right. least that's been my, so yeah, it's just, it just, it did kind of fall together like that. And, and not only is there all the things that you mentioned that, that could give people, uh, could, can stress people out. There's lots of, as we all know, geopolitical things going on in the world. It seems like there's no escape from all this right now. So we, we thought maybe we can offer some original uh, music and positive music and maybe give people a little escape. Or certainly, as has been mentioned before, there's no money in. Uh, it's not, the music business isn't what it was in the 70s and 80s. Of course, right. It's impossible to make money now, even as an original artist, unless you are booking tours and selling merch and getting ticket revenue. I mean, it's, there's no, uh, the radio stations, it's, everything's changed. So this is our little our little collaboration to put some, and hopefully write some new music too, put some music out that's positive, uh, right. have a good band, uh, and, you know, give people an hour of a, a break for an hour, basically. Uh, yeah, very well said. And I know that, I think it was you that said the connections and reflections. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's a really cool aspect of it. We were trying to have kind of a bit of a tagline, and and Gar came up with that. And it was just Did like, I? yeah, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna it give cool. that to him. I'll it was, yeah. really was it you? Okay, it was Greg. <laughs> sorry, it was Greg. Sorry. See? <laughs> I'd like yeah. to go back and make my bio more interesting. Can we do that again? <laughs> <laughs> but one thing, one thing that 
might be uh, intentional is the date of the concert because it does coincide with uh, right. uh, J yeah. John Lennon's passing. So uh, we'll be doing a couple of his songs. And Gord uh, in rehearsal mentioned this uh, uh, documentary on Apple TV, uh, 1971. Yeah. Uh, it's a fabulous documentary about the music that came out in 71 and how it actually did change the world. And uh, I was just, I'm just watching episode two. And John Lennon figures, figures prominently in this episode. And he was really like an original peacemaker. He really was. He was one of the first people to say, well, that guy's a peacemaker. And, that, and, and he was. He really uh, uh, kind of set the trend back then. Right, right. And I remember when, when he and Yoko did the, you know, the, the album and 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 then somewhere along the line it seemed like that whole peace movement kind of got lost in the shovel and i think it's i think it's great that it's coming back and trell i'll ask you this do you feel that people respond to that message of peace and love and tolerance more so when it comes through music absolutely oh my god yeah i think that um music speaks volumes to people um you can you know people with incredible um you know pain or you know, um, if they're sick or whatever, you go to a show and for that hour and a half or whatever, you have no pain. And, you know, it's it's quite amazing. We use music as tools all the time to help people in different situations, right? Um, I think that, you know, us coming together with this, trying to spread the idea of peace and love is going to really catch on. And, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm kind of just going off on a tangent here. No, no. No, that's <laughs> also It's what... what you know, what basically you're talking about is kind of starting a peace movement, Absolutely. you know, and, and and it takes somebody, I mean, it takes somebody to do that. And why not use your platform, you know, to do that? And that's uh, the show that we were just talking about is on December 8th and it's in Maple Ridge. Um, it's uh, a reason or a, sorry, a season for peace and love and memory of John Lennon. And, and so can, where do people get tickets for that and what can they expect at that show? Yeah, it's, it's super easy. All I have to do is, and I'll actually, I'll put the poster in the chat after, but okay. um, it's just laserbeammusic at gmail.com. You can e-transfer. It's $25 a ticket. We tried to keep it, you know, at a low cost so that people could afford to come. Sure. Um, you can call 604-306-0632. Um, please don't call me after midnight. But <laughs> well, before you. Call. <laughs> and then you... <laughs> um, you know, if it's local, we can deliver the tickets as well. But um, what can we expect? They can expect a really wonderful evening of people being able to connect with each other and have some really thoughtful, meaningful music and have some fun as well, you know, that jump in galaxy. Right. In celebration. And Scott, do you think that doing this genre of music, do you think there's a, a difference in the energy or dynamic of the crowd atmosphere as opposed to, say, you know, a raucous heavy metal show or a rock and roll show or... yeah I, you know i always migrate towards this type of music um in that it, it's it creates a lot of uh reflective uh, thinking um you 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 tap into you know that emotional part of the brain and uh and uh, make people feel something and yeah. it's usually you know and even if it's sadness you know like Feeling sadness through music is is healing. It's a good thing. It's cathartic for sure. It's, yeah. I just wanted to say, like, like uh, you know, the whole uh, COVID thing and people being isolated, people not being able to go into and see their relative. They have to see them through a window, and you know, the whole world experienced the collective trauma. And you know, the, the whole phrase that music heals. This type of music is like a, a great healing tool to to get us. You know, help heal our brains through that trauma, and yeah, I, I think that you know, like people need to expose themselves to uh, this type of music in a big way because uh, it's hypnotic, it's therapeutic, it's meditative. The mosh pit is really weird, though. It is. You know. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. I don't get it. Everybody's got their incense waving. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> You know, Mark, I was thinking, you know, just thinking about the collective talent and experience in this band, I would think that collaboration would be, you know, would be a really interesting, or it could be challenging when you have, you know, like would like the too many cooks things. But I guess what I'm asking is, Mark, can you tell us a bit about the band's writing process? Uh, not yet. Not yet. 
I can't tell you anything about the band's writing process because we haven't written anything together yet. Yes. Stone Poets have many songs of of this ilk, let's say, on mm -hmm. on their fantastic album, by the way. Get it. Um, yeah. and it's all it's all songs very positive, you know, uh, songs a lot about peace. So they have that in you know, to begin with. Uh, I had a couple of songs you know, down that line as well. And, um, you know, just uh, songs that bring about thoughtfulness. Of course, Bruce has got. And Bruce yeah. has got so many. <laughs> a couple that we've written together in the, in the past 30 years. So, um, yeah, to this point, we haven't actually sat down and said, okay, let's write a song as Peace Tank Collective. Right. I okay. I, mean, I, should have directed, I should have directed that question maybe at you, Gord. Um, yeah, I was listening to Doesn't Everybody today. Um you wrote that song, correct? Yes, along with another writer called uh, named Suzanne Trefina, or Whiting. Beautiful, actually. beautiful song. Can you tell us about the meaning and inspiration behind that song, from your and, perspective? Oh, inspiration, yeah. Well, um, you know, I I started thinking about. Um, I wanted to write a song about you know togetherness, about about how we're all the same and how we, the things that we think are are very important to us in our lives are are fundamental right so you know, i keep telling the story of when i first started writing the lyric uh and this was way back in the one horse blue days like that song goes back a long ways <laughs> i started writing that song 30 years ago and and uh i started out with a line that said when i'm hungry i eat and and a friend a guy who was in one horse blue at the time you know we're going down the road and i so, and his name is Jim Foster, who's actually from Alberta, um, Foster Child, uh, et cetera. Um, a great songwriter. And, and he, he said, well, that's not true. You know, a lot of people who are hungry can't eat. <laughs> and I went, right, I guess I'm going to go back to the drawing board. Because this is not a fundamental thing. <laughs> We've got to go deeper than that, right? So, yeah, so um, it kind of went into, you know, more of a more of a spiritual kind of what we need to survive, uh, you know, kind of thing. And it's and it's the same for everybody. Like, like in the second verse, I have a color and a creed, and it doesn't everybody, right? Right, yeah. A it's a beautiful, beautiful yeah. song. And the harmonies, I just, I mean, guys, check out the music, the harmonies. I mean, aside from just the musician, musicianship that I can't talk tonight, the harmonies are just impeccable. And and I think you had a, you get a really interesting dynamic when you have a, a female voice, you know, mixing sure. with the male voices. And, and Mark, you, so you come from predom a predominant, predominantly rock and roll background. Mm -hmm. And I'm sort of wondering, if, you know, it's quite different from the music of of the, the Peace Nick Collective genre. And I'm wondering, is it a challenge for you to sort of tone it down for a softer vein of music or or is it a nice change? It's just a place to change. Great. I'm pretty, uh, um, I'm, Scott would tell you, I, I listen to everything. Like uh, maybe not the biggest country fan or opera oh i listen I, I like opera too so i don't know mark Sorry. grew up playing classical music so yeah so i i do like a lot of bands like i don't know nine inch nails tea party so kind of on the darker side i guess <laughs> so and we did that with head so i guess i got my yayas out there like for a few years uh playing in head kind of got that darkness out of me maybe i don't know but yeah i appreciate tons of different kinds of music so i don't know it's not a challenge but it's just another facet yeah it's like creativity using out a different pore kind of way and i and i think it makes you just a more well-rounded musician all of you like for you know from Bo Diddley to chilliwack to head to stone poets to you know like it just collectively makes you a well a more well-rounded group of artists and sure like you you have this ability to you know to go from belting out high intensity rock songs to literally sound like an angel you know, Aww. literally, I was listening. I was on the on Facebook page, and I was listening to some of the the Peace Nick Collective songs, and and it literally it, it's haunt. I it's my favorite term, and it's hauntingly beautiful, and that's how I describe the music, um, because it doesn't it does invoke feelings, and it does, you know, and your voice is it is it's angelic, and I and so it's so well suited to this type of music, and yet with head, you know, very different, right, and and so 
is that an easy shift for you? That, that's my question. Is it an easy shift for you or do you find that you, you're maybe drawn to one style more than the other? Or again, is it about being well-rounded? Well, it's interesting. Last time we went to tea party and I was just like, oh, that's my love thing. That. Oh, I love you, Jeff Martin. Oh, you know, just up there in the power <laughs> everything and I couldn't hear anymore and it was amazing and but um, honestly it's not really who I am like even though I've always like even my solo career I was like I'm a rock star I'm a rocker chick but I've never really been I've been more adult contemporary artist the whole time I love the stone poet stuff um harmonies are really hard for me because I've always been you know a lead singer and so right. you know I know Gord's been you know a couple of times he's like oh yeah no try this one Sherelle it's it's mm. really work for me and in stone poets as well mark writes you know a lot of the harmonies and so i have to really dig into it and, and learn the part because i don't maybe hear it right away but right. really that's great oh, yeah. that's so sweet. And, and totally opposite for me because i've been a background vocalist and happily all my career until lately and now they've got me singing one line in a john Lennon song and <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. It's closing up the oh, oh. your horizons, hey Greg. <laughs> Greg, what is the best thing about being in Peace Nick Collective? Oh, all of it. And I said it the other day after rehearsal. I just it's fun playing with these guys, and it's very early in the process. So, I mean, I'd like to come back here in a year and talk about all the songs we've written together and all the festivals we've done over the last year. Can you that book that right now, Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> so we, can, we can make that happen. Uh, have your people call our people. <laughs> but I'm, uh, yeah. I, mean, I'm, I have I'm, no people, but you can call me. <laughs> <laughs> I pretend <laughs> I have people, but. <laughs> yeah, we have no people. We have Bruce. <laughs> yeah, Bruce. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not oh, me. hey, guess, guess, who's in the, guess who's in the house? Tad Goddard's in the house. Hi, Tad. Oh. Hi, Tad. Hi, Tammy, if you're there, sweetie. He's just saying, hey, guys, how's it going? We're good. We're good. Hey, Tad. Uh, Rob Castro. I always have a trouble with this last name. Rob Castro Giovanni. Okay. Okay, he's saying all great bands. My favorite song by Prism is Spaceship Superstar. I keep thinking how awesome it would actually be if you could do a concert in space. <laughs> <I'm in. laughs> yeah. wow. Rob's having some sips tonight. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> then again, Mark had a bottle of whiskey at the beginning of the show, so right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. joke, joke, joke. Uh, so anyway, he says, um, if you could do a concert in space, but my anthem is a night to remember. I remember I was in a boarding school and I was sick, so I got to miss a week of school, come home on a Sunday night, but left on a Monday, and now every time I Think of that. I sing a night to remember. Oh, yeah. well, we do a concert in space. We'll do a night to remember as well. <laughs> there you go. Um, oh, Tad saying I was there too. It's space. Not no, I think he's, <laughs> <laughs> I think Tad's talking about uh, the tea party. Oh, the tea oh, party. Oh, yeah. the tea party. oh, Tad at the tea party too. Right on. Uh, oh. Tad and Tommy love those two. Uh, you see, use Machiai, buddy. He says, hey, amigo, you look incredible. Oh, thank you. Hey, guys, quick question. What's been your greatest moment musically? Why don't we start with you, Scott? Wow. Oh, one moment? Okay. Oh. No uh, pressure. Um, <laughs> been, well, it, um, when you win over a crowd, that's the best. Um, we were playing in Oakland. Oh, damn, I was going to take that one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we were just doing this uh, kind of West Coast tour of California there. And we uh, went in to do this hospital gala in Oakland. And uh, it was, I think there was maybe 200, 300 people in this theater. Um, but it was, we were the only uh, Caucasian people there uh, in, the, in the place. And when we walked into the place, we had our simple gear. We were we have a simple band, simple formula: two acoustic guitars, a, a mandolin, and a, a keyboard. We walked in, and there was this kick-ass friggin' soul band on stage. They were just amazing. Two front uh, female singers who could just belt it out, and uh, then this band that was just great. And we walk in, and we walk in right across the stage because we we're told to because it was rehearsal. For the for the next night, 
and uh, we walked through, and the, they kind of stopped. <laughs> they stopped and looked at us. And we're like, we're, "What are you guys doing?" <laughs> so anyway, that the next night we went out there and we played three or four songs. And you could hear a pin drop until the song was over, and the, we got a standing ovation. And it was great. That was the, my best moment. And That's and really comments like. You guys can sing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they could sing. My God. Yeah, all right, guy. And he was like six, five or whatever. He's like, you guys can sing, man. You guys can sing. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I think we sold more merch that night than we it was like maybe CDs. have since. It was wow. insane. Yeah. yeah. I was just like, ah. Oh. Um, you go. You go next. Have you got a moment? Who, me? Yeah. I actually have two. One, I'll be real short with this. One was when I was um, in in university and we had a choir, a university choir that went to Germany and we went to Salzburg and we went to the Salzburg Cathedral where Mozart was, of course, the, the big wig, you know, making all the music and is born there. I think he was born there. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, and there was this Baroque mass going on and, and it was incredible to hear all these original instruments of the Baroque era playing in the mass, uh, it was a Latin mass. And then we actually got to sing in the Salzburg Cathedral, which was very cool. And the other one was when I played, because the Edmonton Folk Fest, they, they um, every year, and the Edmonton Folk Fest is a big one, they close every Sunday night with Four Strong Winds by Ian Tyson. Mm -hmm. And I was playing with Ian and we closed on Sunday night uh, with four strong winds oh. with the end and, and the place just every lighter like thousands and thousands <laughs> of lighters went on, all the way up ah. the hill it was and that was uh, like one of those shiver moments for sure wow. oh, oh no. we lost your hearing I can't hear you anymore there we go um, there, we there we go um yeah i was just gonna say one of those life is good moments you know where you just it's just that natural high that yeah, and, I mean, other than many moments on stage, just even with these guys, where you go, this feels great. You know, I mean, then you just strive for those moments too. But those were. Yeah. Mark, how about you? Um, only one that's coming to mind right now is um. So, being a musician, we, we're, I'm still a fan of lots of other musicians and stuff. So, right. we were playing um. Just this last year, we were playing in Nova Scotia, and um, it was Toronto, and then Prism, and then Gowan. And I'd never met Gowan before. I've always been a huge Gowan fan, and uh, and so I got to meet him that night. I walked up and said hi to him, and we talked for a while before the show and and stuff. And then and uh, and then his show was great, and got to watch that like side stage and. Then walking past his dressing room afterwards, and and he stops, like, put his shirt off and everything, but his doors kind of open, and he stops and he goes, "Hey, Mark, it was great to meet you." So, and then the fan in me was like, "Wow, he remembered my name. That's really cool." <laughs> you know, really cool. And yeah, so that, that's that's a small moment, I guess, but uh, yeah, just you never lose that part of your your music. Cality, I guess, so, you know, besides right. position. I love that because I don't think you ever want to lose that ability to be a fan just because you're around it all the time. Right. You know, I, I yeah, I think it's really important never to lose that. And Gowan, Gowan is, he's such a lovely, lovely human. He was on the show too. And we were talking about his show that was coming to Lethbridge. And he's like, well, don't buy me. You know, he sent me tickets. And, and then afterwards, like he texted me to ask if my seats were okay. <laughs> I was like, awesome. like, scared of my phone like I almost took a screenshot of it to frame I was like, but I, that same feeling Mark I had that same feeling that that you experienced it's like you know yeah, and what a what a nice guy to even remember that he had given me tickets you know and mm -hmm. but I find that way with a lot of our Canadian most of our Canadian artists are, are that way and I think I don't know and and um you know I don't know Greg maybe you can answer this um I think it comes from I think we get gracious and I'm not talking about me, but you, I think that that gracious attitude comes from still doing it all these years later. Would you agree to that? Cause that's rare. That's a very elite group. Like 
you know, Mark, when prison was on, we talked about being a part of a very elite group, which I'm now calling like the fabulous 40, because you were around 40 years ago and fast forward people still 40 years later, 35, however long it's been still want to, they still are happy to pay to come and see prison play and Chilliwack and, and all of these bands. And, and would you agree that maybe that's where that gratitude comes from is just the fact that we're, you know, you're still doing what you're doing. Well, it, it's changed through the years, but for me, yes, I, the gratitude I have for, you know, my parents sending me to clarinet lessons when I was six was where that started because I didn't start playing drums till I was out of high school. Right. Uh, and then supporting me through the years and the support of my wife uh, to keep going because it's tough because the money is always tough. Right. Um, so it's hard and I've had other jobs through the years too. but. It, once you, you know, you have these, you're talking about magic moments on stage, and I have a thousand of them because it's always the same. Whether it's a little, tiny little room with 10 people in it, uh, or whether it's a festival crowd of thousands going nuts, what makes me happy is when everybody on the stage, something really great happens on stage, everybody looks at each other and smiles. Yeah, Because yeah. yeah. they know it. Because this is very yeah. zen. I mean, there's, it's, the communication is on a different level. And those are the greatest moments for me, especially now, because they're more and more valuable. We've all lost friends lately. You know, the older you get, the older you get. Right. And so I definitely feel very, very blessed to still be, a, to still be able to play, but you have to put the work in. I'd just like to add, too, that I always tell my kids, you got to do things for the right reasons. You know, I mean, you, you find something you'll do for free and try to make a living at it. And, and Good advice. Great advice. And when people uh, tell me, oh, you must love music, I say, well, actually, it loved me first yeah. because I can't get rid of it. And, and, and that's the right reason. I live, eat, breathe, and sleep music. And my, my mother used to say, you should take a week off and not think about music. I go, mom, I can't ever think about music. I've always got music in my head, always. It doesn't matter if probably when I'm sleeping, I do too. So, you know, it owns me. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's, it's not what you do it really does become who you are and and so yeah. scott you, you know being like, that you work in it you know for years and years and years do you feel like now it's become not what you do but who you are right? oh yeah. yeah yeah um was that to me or is that to no there's you yeah oh yeah um you know what i've always had it had it in me and it, like, I'll, I'll tell you another hockey story <laughs> i was playing bantam triple a hockey and uh, we used to travel all the way across the sky i was I'm from saskatchewan you know those um icy roads oh wait yeah, i'm from saskatchewan yes yeah <laughs> and so and i remember on a like the bus the window used to be really cold like and i'd be sitting in a seat there'd be a bunch of guys playing cards in the back they'd have the ghetto blaster just cranked on uh, Ozzy Osbourne and you know those bands like which was you know great stuff I had in my head I would recite all of Chris Christopherson's greatest hits <laughs> I'd be wow. singing it as I'm traveling to our next game yeah <laughs> that's amazing yeah <laughs> that's great. I've always had it had music just always in my, like even playing hockey you know like hockey's kind of similar you you have a rhythm going on right and right. I always had a song in my head. Sometimes the song wasn't the best for the, the moment, but, yeah. Yeah. take five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's just you know. And I played soccer. Same thing. You know, it's always have it in had it in my head. I was always singing all the time. Yeah. Right, right. And I do. I, I think it's born. I think it's born. I think it's in your blood. And then it's just a matter of life circumstances, either bringing it out for you or or we go seeking it. You know, but either way, it definitely is who you are you know, from what you do. And um, I'm just going to go to a few comments because there's a ton of comments coming in here. Um, oh, Syl Thompson is in the house. Hi, Syl. Oh, we love We Syl. love Syl is one of the best Bowie impersonations oh, yeah. oh, on the gosh. planet. On the planet. I keep trying to get him to come to Lethbridge here. But um, so I've only I've never seen him live. I've just seen footage. But he looks like him. He sounds like him. He's, you know, he's got the moves. It's incredible. A night of bully if you guys ever get a chance to see Syl. So, hey, thanks for joining us, Syl. Uh, Cindy Miller says, such a great collection of talent and integrity. Just what we need right now to help us all heal. Yes. Uh, hey, awesome. Oh, Maggie Hall. Hey, Maggie. Maggie's a local friend of mine. What a fantastic show tonight. Really enjoy hearing from them all. 
Thanks, Maggie. Uh, Rob is saying, yeah, I wish I was older sometimes so that I could have started in the 70s or 80s. Not that it might not have made any difference. The music biz is so competitive. Uh, <laughs> Tad, of course, is from Prism. Mark's bandmate is saying, do you take collect calls? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what collective means. No. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we do. Don't lie down, Kat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <Yeah. That'll down. laughs> Good one, Tad. A little is he a, a little smart assery on a Sunday night. <laughs> oh, Bruce is in the house. Yeah. Yes. Hey. Hi, Bruce. He says I'm your people. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> our people. Our people. Who's our, our fearless leader? Yeah. We want to know if you to like take collect calls, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> he does. Uh, thanks for joining us, buddy. I'm so sorry that you couldn't be here, but I have a feeling that we're all going to be back here next time talking about new songs and tours and stuff like that. And and you will definitely be in on that. So there's no getting out of it. Just saying. Corey Crisco, uh, hello, you beauties, all of you. <laughs> uh, Doug Corby, hi, buddy. Um, Dino Vizzuti, hello, Kelly and Peacenik. Great sound you all have. Love it. Uh, oh, and Bruce is saying, I'm assuming this is a smart-ass response to do you take clock calls? He says not a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we collect calls. Yeah. So, um, you know, we were talking earlier about um, Prism getting and Chilliwack getting on the uh, Canadian Rock of Fame. And so I want to give a shout out to my show sponsors, Writers and Rockers Coffee Company. So tonight's feature coffee, I think the light is, is Lee Aaron's Body Rock. So uh, first, Lee Aaron was also inducted into the Canadian Rock of Fame. So yeah, shout out to Writers and Rockers Coffee. Uh, I Guys, with Christmas coming, I got to say, what a great gift for everyone who doesn't love coffee. Um, so check it out, www.writersandrockerscoffeecompany.com. They've got all your favorite rock star endorsed coffee blends. They've got merch. I've got my Todd Kearns Damn It mug here, uh, T-shirts, all kinds of cool stuff. So huge shout out to them. Um, also, Shrell, we should give away some free tickets to the comedy club. Let's do that. So here's a really tough question. You have to name one band that each of us have been in. That's how you're going to win. That's how you're going to win. That means you need to name six bands. Or while well, Bruce isn't here, but we're going to include Bruce anyway. Well, so, uh, oh, no. So yeah, the first person to to name a band that each one of these guests have been in, all six of them, and that includes Bruce Coughlin too. Is it Coughlin? Am I pronouncing that right? Coughlin. Coughlin. Coughlin who is not with us tonight and does not take collect calls. Um, we'll win the four free tickets. So thanks, uh, huge shout out to James Bariza and Good Times Comedy Club for graciously giving us the tickets. Um, well, I got one more question for you guys. Um, and I'm going to ask each of you this one. I'll start with you, Mark. Um, so where do you, ideally in a perfect world, where do you see yourself in five years? Like either, you know, with Peace Nick Collective or just in general, if you could wave a wand in a perfect world. That answer has changed so much over the years. That question's different than it was like five years ago. Um, five years from now, yeah, I thought if I could still be doing what I'm doing right now, that would be amazing. Um, big, I love doing big outdoor festivals. If that can keep going on and I love recording, I still want to do that. Um, you know, and world domination. <laughs> and world and domination collective at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. What would you say, Shrill? Uh, well, we just released a new album, Human. So right. if anybody is interested in that, go to stonepoets.ca and you can find out all about it. You can buy, um, yeah, you can buy the hard copy. Yeah. But we haven't released it. To That's right. We have not. It, uh, January 31st, platforms, it yeah. drops on all the platforms. So I think in five years' time, really what I'd like to see is Peace Nick Collective doing really big festivals, Stone Poets doing festivals, like just building the machine. And that's that's really? kind of where I see everything going. And hopefully if everybody's still interested in doing all that stuff in five years time, then yeah, keep it going. I mean, in five years, I'll be almost 40, so. <laughs> I, know. <laughs> I know. Me too, Mark, I know, me too. <laughs> 
All right on. Oh, just really quickly, uh, Mitch Desmoreau is saying, looking good, crew. Cheers from the Deadwood Valley Boys. Awesome. Nice. Yeah. Um, Bruce Coughlin is saying, Red Robertson used to say, every day above ground. Exactly. Uh, so you know, and I love that answer. Go ahead. Five years, five years everybody's going to be healthy and happy and still playing yep. music. So it really matters. Health. Health. Yeah. Health. yeah. At our age. Good answer. Yeah, at our age. <laughs> what do you mean, <laughs> at our age? Goes, it kind of goes without saying. <laughs> but you know, it's different. These It's different in this day and age for people of our age group because it's like 50 is the new 40 and 60 is the new 50. And, you know, it's it's a much different ballgame nowadays when, you know, a generation ago, by the time you were most of our ages, you were gardening in your car again. And there was, there was no fun to be had. Oh, you know, it's different now. You know, it's, you know, there, there's no need to suddenly you know, throw in the towel because you've reached a certain age and, and there's people out there, you know, proving that on a daily basis. So that's a good line for a song, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that's that's great. Awesome. We all wrote it down in our heads. Yeah. <laughs> What's the line, Mark? Gardening in your cardigan. That's great. <laughs> it almost rhymes. I know, almost rhymes, yeah. yeah. So Gardening in your cardigan. <laughs> Uh, you heard it here. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you heard it here first, folks, on Etc. Live. <laughs> uh, Chris, oh, Christine Dennis. Hi, Christine. Uh, she is saying, Mark Gladstone and Cheryl Jardine, we love you in capital letters. Aww. Aww, we, we love, love you, you guys, too. too. Aw, right on. Um, okay, so, Gord, you were going to answer that. What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> we, of course, was lost. Do you take collect calls? I think was the question. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> like you. Where do you see yourself in five years in a perfect world? Uh, well, I think, you know, Greg said it uh, perfectly. Is, you know, we'll hopefully healthy, healthy and happy. But uh, um, I'm, I just love to write songs. So if I'm, you know, writing songs still in my studio, which I hopefully I will be. By the way, my I'm you know the 60s and U40. I wish my back would would be there. <laughs> yeah. I'll follow that rule. So um, so I'm not sure. You know, it's like like Mark says. I'm not sure. You never know in this business what's what's going to happen. Really, you might be uh, get a gig overseas and you know be there for two years. But I wouldn't do that. But you know, yeah. someone else might. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> but right. hopefully, Peace Nick Collective is a you know, going strong and uh, people are getting peaceful. <laughs> Collectively. <laughs> yeah, it's just songwriting. I'm, I'm, I'm working on stuff too, so we'll, we'll work on that. My Did daughter's I... a writer too, so I've just been working on that stuff. Maybe in five years I'll have an album done, I don't know, for her. Great. How old is your daughter? 30. <laughs> 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 That's my new daughter. <laughs> she can appreciate it. Then. <laughs> she kind of when she was twelve. So. <laughs> oh, Karen, Karen Bard, you all know her. She just popped in and wanted to say hello. Hi, she... hi Karen. Hello, all. She's saying hi, beautiful. Thanks for joining us, Scott. What would your answer to that question be? Well, I, I think uh, Greg answered it, it really well. I, I want to have grandchildren in the next five years. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, you don't hear me very often. Are you quitting the band? Are you, no. Are you I hoping for an a, NHL player in the future? <laughs> yeah. you, you see my size. There's no way there's an NHL player. Gene <laughs> Pool, but uh, uh, no, I, I just I, I hope I'm still playing. I hope I'm playing with this group of people because. Good answer, and you know it's doable. There's no reason why you why you guys won't be back on this show in five years because I'm going to assume that I will still have this show in five years. And I'm going to assume that you guys will be writing a ton of new music and touring around, spreading a message of love and tolerance and peace. And on behalf of all the viewers, I just can't thank you enough for all of, all of you, like herding cats, right? You're out to all be here together. <laughs> That's my we're, missing, we're still missing one. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> so the corollary of the metaphor is uh, she's, she's the motorboat and we're the skiers behind. Her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, we're doing this. We're doing that. And they're like, oh. Okay. <laughs> okay. Woman to pull it all together, hey? Uh, so Bruce is just saying much love. 
Uh, much love to you, Bruce, and uh, you will be joining us next time. And much love to all of you. Thank you so much for taking the time to come and hang with us tonight. And and uh, on behalf of all the viewers and fans, we just wish all of you nothing but continued success and health, happiness, and all things amazing to you all. That's awesome. Thank you so much for having us. And peace, and Nick, collective.ca. It does go to our Facebook page right now, but then you can get all the information. And if anybody wants tickets, once again, just jump on that page. And thank you, Kelly, for having us. Like, seriously, what a what a great platform to give us some promotion. So thank anytime. You. you all have a home here. You're welcome here anytime. And Sherelle, you give me that address and I'll post it up on my Facebook. Thank you. Okay. Which awesome. is as well. All right. Thanks so much for tuning in. Everybody have an awesome week. Be really nice to each other. Peace, love to everybody. Um, and I'll see you next time with Michael Williams from Much Music. Have a great week, everybody. Awesome.